Hello, we are back with uh, session three in our series about the Holy Trinity. And we have previously talked about uh, the Holy Spirit, that is one part of the Godhead. We have also talked about Jesus, the second part of the, the Godhead, and we made a video about in two parts about Jesus. And today we have uh, the, the glorious Father, the Father. God himself, that's the theme for today. And uh, many people don't know God and many people have a very queer view of God. And I know it because I had it myself for, for about 55 year, years. And uh, recently, most recently, I started to learn God. And there is only one way to learn to know God. There is no other way, and that is through His Word. That is through the Bible. Because when you read the Bible and you're baptized with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit starts to talk to you about what's written in the Bible. And finally, you're starting to understand who is God. And my very simple understanding is that God is the Father. He is the Creator of the universe. He's my creator, and I am his creation. And that made me very humble when I realized that I'm just a creation. And God is in total control of my life. He has purpose for my life, and I have a choice, because he gave me a free will. I can choose to go his way, or I can, could go my way. And uh, there is a psalm in the Bible, Psalm 1, that is very good because it is a wisdom psalm. And it's about moral life. As a, as a human being you have uh, two choices. You can walk the path of uh, God or the way of the wicked. Or the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. And uh, that's what we are doing. Those who think they can manage everything themselves, uh, full of pride, they disregard from the fact that they are only a creation. And they have no strength by themselves, in themselves. Because all strength that you have, all wisdom that you have, comes from God. We are totally empty without Him. And I tried to walk my way, anyway, without him, for 55 years. And what happened with that? Uh, that was not so good result. <laughs> I can say that. And uh, finally I started to learn, and he, he humbled me. He took me to a trial and he humbled me. And then I realized, dear father, I am nothing without you. And from now on, I will walk your way. I won't make any more rebellion against you. I am righteousness now because of Christ. And that's my short introduction and I know Lewis has prepared a, long, a lot for this. It took a few days between the, the last video because the Lord spoke to him a lot about what he wanted us to say about the Father. So I'm very excited to hear what you and Jesus had put together, Louis. Well, thank you very much. As, uh, to give the backdrop, we have said that in order to get to know God, you have to get to know all three persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to, in order to get to know the Father, uh, it's kind of like <clears throat> if um, somebody said they're going to well, let me start with your family. Let's say that you, you have a family, and how is it that you know them? Well, you don't know them just by hearing about them. You know them because of your relationship with them. A spouse, a parent, a child. You, you, you really know members of your family because of this relationship that you have gotten. And it's the relationship in this case is by the Holy Spirit, but it's also uh, learning about Him. Let's say that uh, somebody wants to set me up with a blind date. 
Lewis, I have this wonderful girl I want you to meet and go out with. Well, you know the first thing I'm going to say is, tell me about her. And uh, that doesn't make the relationship, but it's a natural thing you want to know about them. And so we're going to explore uh, things about the Father uh, to help you on the way to establishing this relationship with Him that you want. Now, of course, we, as Mikhail has said, the only way to get to know God, the only way to God and access to God is limited to Jesus. As Jesus said in, in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in Matthew 11, Jesus said, All things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. So the only way that you will get a revelation of the Father is through Jesus. It's not going to be any other false god or religion or ritual. And you are a proof of that because when you were in heaven, it was Jesus who asked you, do you want to meet the Father? Yes. And yes. it was Jesus who took you to the Father. Yes. Yeah. In fact, that's what he said, I'm, now I'm going to take you to the Father. Yeah. Um, now, the first order of business in getting to know somebody is their name. And just God is not going to cut it. Um, now, in the Old Testament, uh, it's Yahweh and Jehovah. But in the New Testament, it's quite different. In fact, when Moses was getting called by God at the burning bush, and Moses says, uh, God, they're going to want to know your name. What shall I tell them is your name? And God said, I am that I am. And in the book of John, there's seven I am's. But that is not his name. If you want to get to know somebody, the first thing you want to know is their name. And Jesus goes to great lengths to explain to us that his name is the Father. Uh, in the Gospel of John alone, now Jesus and John refer to God as the Father 130 times. Now, um, that is the name that Jesus used, and that is the name that Paul used every time. Every time. His name is the Father. Now, I'm going to read to you from John 17. This is... Jesus' uh, high priestly prayer in Gethsemane, Gethsemane. Jesus said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me, out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. This is right after he has referred to his father as father many times. And then in, further in the same chapter 17, Jesus says, O righteous father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name. Now, Jesus says, I have declared to them your name. The only name that Jesus has ever used for his Father God is Father. That's the only name he's ever declared. And he says, I have declared to them your name. And will declare that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. 
And in Matthew 11, Jesus says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. This is, this is the name by which Jesus always referred to his Father. Father, that is the name you use. It's not Yahweh, it's not Jehovah, it's not I Am. It's none of this religious Judaism baloney. It is the name that Jesus used. I'm not saying that these are baloney, but as far as his name goes, they are not his name. And if, if I want Michael to be my friend, I call him by, my, by his name, Michael. You can try George and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, George! <laughs> <clears throat> In John 1 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You now there are many, many more scriptures that talk about this. And I'm going to skip over them because I really do think that our audience is mature enough in the Lord that they're not going to get sidetracked by something as silly as calling our Father anything other than Father. And what's more, that is who you want Him to be to you. Believe me. Now Paul also calls God Father on numerous occasions. Paul uses the precise phrase, God our Father. God our Father. In the opening of eight of his letters, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. God our Father. In 1st Corinthians 8, 6, Paul writes, Yet for us there is one God, the Father. <laughs> there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. And in Galatians 4, 6, Paul writes, Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. This is, what the, this is how the Spirit in you cries out to God, Father. Amen. There are numerous prayers, well, not numerous, but there are at least several prayers of Paul in his letters, and in every one of them, he addresses Father in Jesus' name. And this, by the way, is the way to pray. You pray to your Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Now, as Michael said, Jesus took me to heaven to see the Father. I didn't see Him, but to be with the Father. And it was in heaven. And this is biblical. The references to the Father are in heaven. Uh, Matthew 23, 9. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. This prompts me to say what I feel just absolutely compelled to say. Of all the blasphemies in the heretical Roman Catholic cult, which is a satanic cult, probably the most horrendous of all is to call their pedophile pope Holy Father. They, Disgusting. they called this man Holy Father. There is one Holy Father. Jesus says, Do not call anyone on earth your Father, for one is your Father, He who is in heaven. Amen. In Matthew 5, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. heaven. In Matthew 5, 45, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. heaven. Matthew 6, 1, beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward 
with your Father who is in heaven. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught, he says, Our Father who is in heaven. <laughs> Every time he is in heaven. Mark 11, whenever you stand praying, forgive. Do you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is in heaven, heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. Now, one of the inherent attributes of God is that, is that He knows everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows our actions. He knows our words. He literally knows everything. This is consistent with the logical conclusion that God would not create any place that is hidden from Him. He is not going to create, as a part of His creation, any place where He cannot reach. And if, if he, in uh, Proverbs 15.3, Solomon wrote, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. Ephesians 4.6 one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. He's everywhere. And Psalm 139, uh, verses 7 through 12, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically David is saying, there is no place so high so far, so deep, so wide, that God is not there. He is there. Uh, he dwells in the remotest parts of the sea. Now, another attribute of God is His infinite amount of power. If He's creating everything, uh, then He is going to do it to the fullest extent. And he, he has this limitless power. In Romans 1.20, talking about creation, uh, Paul wrote, For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Eternal power and divine nature. This may sound uh, trite to you, but sometimes we think that the things that escape God, that He's fallen asleep or He's not paying attention, and that is never the case. Uh, I know that in my Christian walk there have been times when I've wondered whether or not God has slipped up a little bit and he has decided he's not going to be so good with me. Um, but the fact is that God is good. He is good as a father. And I want to read you one thing that Jesus um, said that's recorded in Matthew 7. And he's talking about his father. And Jesus said this, well, what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he, will he give him a snake? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? It may seem that what he's doing is not always good, but he is always good. If he, you see, he can do anything he wants. If he wanted to do evil, he would have already done it and we'd already be wiped out. But he is good and he continues to be good and he will always be good. In James, James wrote, Every good thing 
given, and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. <laughs> I love that phrase, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. I cannot count the number of people that I have talked to about the gospel and about God. And the vast majority of them who reject God believe that God is supposed to be like they want Him to be. In other words, they want God. We're talking about God here. They want God to be as flexible as man's imagination. And, I mean, is that really the kind of God anybody wants? Is that even possible? God is God. He is unchanging. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And James says, with whom there is no variation or even a shifting shadow, God remains who He is. As I said in, in Hebrews, it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, there is another side of God that uh, I must declare to you, otherwise you're not getting the full picture. And this is the God who sits on the great white throne of judgment. This is the God to be feared. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's, I think, three times in the Bible. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Now, I'm going to read from Revelation, which means you sit back and you listen. You just get the imagery. Let this image go before you. I'm going to read you. 15 verses from Revelation 20. <clears throat> then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. This is what awaits those that reject God's beloved Son who is sitting next to Him, who gave His life so that you could have eternal life free of charge. Hebrews 10.31 reads, It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a, it's a terrifying thing for those that are not right with Him. In Matthew 10, Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear Him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, <clears throat> I've been to heaven. First I made friends with the Holy Spirit, then I was taken up to see Jesus, and then Jesus took me to see His Father. And I was with the Father many times. And one day, he said something to me that would turn out to be the single most special moment of my entire life. He said to me, I'm going to take you into the garden. 
And I said, where is that? He says, it's behind the throne. So he took me into this garden, and we sat there together in this garden. And it's, well, it's where you want to go. In a couple of verses in Matthew 6, Jesus touches on this. But you, when you pray, pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Again, Matthew 6. So that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by Father, by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You want to do whatever is necessary to get to know the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father. <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> I remember this time, I, I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, <clears throat> and one time the police uh, published this report about the street with the most car accidents of any street in our city. And it was Parham Road, which is very close to where I live, half a block away. And I was over there on Parham Road one time, and I tell you, the traffic's just like this. And they have this median strip in the middle of the two sides that's one meter wide. And this father and his son, who looked like he was about six or eight years old, ran across and stood there on this median strip. And I watched them. And this little boy was holding his father's hands in one of the most dangerous places in the whole world, possibly. And he had absolutely no fear on his eyes, in his face. None. He was holding his father's hand. I remember another time I was on a tram in Russia and the father and the son got on together and they looked around and there were no two seats together but there was one seat on one side of the aisle and one seat on the other side of the aisle and the boy did not want to sit apart from his father he wanted to stay with his dad we all want to stay with our dad and remember that it's you who shows what path you will choose in life. The, the path of the righteous and the part or the part of the wicked. Your choice will be eternal. Please remember that. And God doesn't send anybody to hell. It's people who send themselves to hell. Thank you for today. Thank you, Louis. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.